So, uh, let's, let's have a go at this together. Now, I started off nice and gentle. So I give you a function, and then I ask you to evaluate that function at x equals negative 3, right? So f of negative 3 equals, and hopefully you were okay to do this substitution in here, negative 3 all squared just becomes 9. You add your 3 and you get 12. So far so good, right? Um, and then I said, in a seemingly unrelated way, Oh, and then please sketch it. Okay, now I'm about to show you what the sketch looks like. It actually has all of the information from the rest of the question, more or less, all of it on there. So it's going to spoil a few things, but we'll discuss it as we go. I will point out though, just have a look at your graph right now. Actually, not just look at yours, look at the persons next to you. And I want you to have a quick look at what kind of information they placed on that graph, because you need a fair bit of information to know that it's this graph and not any other. Let me show you mine. <laughs> okay, so we all had a parabola. Again, I know there's lots of information on here that I had to pre-draw, but we'll get to it in a second. You've got the parabola, but importantly, I think most people are okay to have put that intercept on there, which was, by the way, what? What's the intercept? Uh, three. It's 3, right? Because the normal x squared, and it's been translated vertically upwards, so that's... Um, that's at 3, right there. I think most people were OK to instinctively put that on. But if that's the only piece of information you have for scale, it could be a whole bunch of different parabolas. It could be x squared plus 3, which is what we're suggesting. Um, but it could have been 2x squared plus 3, or 3x squared plus 3, or another variety of different things. So that's why I asked you, uh, right at the start of the question, to find a point. Right Now, you didn't have to put this point. You could have put another point, like 1, 4. That would have been on the parabola. or 2,7, that would have been on the parabola, but you found this one already, so why not use that as your point for scale? Question. Oh, no, never mind. Okay, yeah. yeah. So just making sure you see where I got this from, right? I asked you to evaluate when x is negative 3, what's the function equal to? You got an answer of 12. And what that tells you is a pair of coordinates, right? Negative 3, comma 12, they go together, so that's the point I decided to put on there, okay? All right, happy time. So um, you got a rough sketch. Um, I think the next thing I asked you was to differentiate, right? So what was your, um, what was your derivative? It was just 2x. It's a fairly simple derivative. And then I asked you to differentiate again, which gave you just 2. OK, so it's just a constant. Interesting, OK. Now the next thing that you got requested to do was to take those two derivatives that you just got and then evaluate them. At that same spot that I asked you about up above, you know where the point is, but you, you haven't got any information about what it's doing at that point. So we're going to evaluate this, right? So let's take each of these two derivatives. I'm going to grab a new color here. So f dash of negative 3. I'm still substituting in the same value, but I'm substituting it into something different. Not f of x. I'm substituting it into f dash. So of course, you all have a value which is? Minus 6. Minus 6, negative 6. Great. Now, a few of you asked me when we got to this point, you're like, What's going on here, right? Like, I, and that was the exact sound you made. Um, when you're trying to substitute in negative 3, you're like, there's, there's no x's to substitute into. No problem. If there's no x's, then you've sort of done the substitution already. It's just equal to 2. It's always equal to 2, no matter what x value you put in. It, the way we would say it is, it's independent of x. So since there's no x's, you're always going to get a second derivative of 2, no matter where you are. Okay. All right, so now we've done A, we've done B, we've done C. The last thing, which was just to see if you could bring all the language together um, from graphing, last topic. I said solve when the derivative is greater than 4. And then show me where that is on your sketch. So let's just quickly do it here. I've got some space. Whoops. Our derivative, as you worked out earlier, was 2x. So to solve when the derivative is greater than 4, I'm going to solve when that's greater than 4. Yes? And then as you notice, you're like, oh, um, I don't want 2x, I just want x. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. That's all fine. It's a positive number. So you just get x is greater than 2. And there's a couple of different ways to show that. Um, and I, didn't, I wasn't hyper-specific about this on, um, in the question. Um, one way you can represent an inequality is using a number line. Right? Now this is, a, this is an x value here. x is greater than 2. Right? So we would use the x number line, the horizontal axis. So you could, for example, um, and if you haven't done this, you're welcome to join me. You could find where 2 is, like so. Do you remember? This is actually all the way from last year. And then you're saying greater than 2. So I'm going to the right. Is that OK? Um, I drew a hollow circle on 2. Why is it hollow? 
because two is not included. Uh, it's not greater than or equal to, it's just greater than, okay? Um, that's one way to show it. Um, another way that I thought, well, we have the graph here, so why don't just we have a look at it? You might notice now, and I didn't ask you to do this, so don't worry if you're like, why is that on there and it's not on mine. I actually have got a whole bunch of the derivatives all along the curve. Um, this is calling back to when we did this last lesson. We were looking at different values of the first and second derivative. What are those red arrows looking down on the left-hand side? What do they mean? It's a negative gradient. So we've got a decreasing function on the left-hand side, yeah? And then right down the bottom, uh, it happens to be the y-intercept. You've got a, what's that called right at the bottom? A stationary point, so your gradient's not going up, it's not going down. Um, the tangent is horizontal at that point. Uh, and then lastly, it sort of picks up, and you can see they're all green over there, they're all increasing, but I wanted to know when they're increasing at a rate greater than four. So that's why you can see they're like, ooh, all the steep sections are over on the right-hand side. Are you okay with that? 